Look out, Arthur. She shoots glass eyes. I don't know why, but that line just tickled me. <laughs> Greetings, YouTube. I was going to do an episode two review. I didn't get episode two. What I got was episode two, three, four, five, six. I, <laughs> I got an entire series, so it's kind of thrown me out. So I guess the Tick series one review instead. Uh, minor spoilers, I guess, but uh, there's not much to spoil. The comedy seems to be the focus of this series. It's kind of like Deadpool. There's not really any point to spoiling it. Arthur references that the Tick's outfit has been updated since episode one. The villains have a conversation about branding. The main villain insists that all his henchmen gets this, like, tattoo around their eye. And Miss Lint is having none of it. He's going, branding is important. The tick is real. Because first episode, I was actually wondering about this. No third party ever sees Arthur and the tick together. And whenever Arthur tries to go, oh, where are you? And the tick's gone. Arthur starts to question this at the beginning of episode two, you know. Is he, is he a figment of my imagination? Oh, oh my God, I am the tick. It, no, no. Someone finally, very quickly sees them together. The tick is real. Arthur has a bit of a crisis about not wanting to be a hero. He just wants a normal life. New character is introduced into the mix, which the police rather hilariously write down as Robo Ninja. Overkill kind of looks like Deathstroke. It's not a complaint, it's just an observation. But this one's actually funny. And the two guys try to come into the shop where the tick is and they try to get the money, the protection money off of the shop owner and the tick's having none of it. And one guy gets his gun out and bang! And the other guy gets shot in the shoulder. And he's like, you shot me! How was I supposed to know that was going to happen? There's a surprising number of comedy pairings in this series. I thought it'd just be like the tick and the terror who would be the, the comedy portion. Everybody else would be serious. There's comedy pairings everywhere in this show. These two, these two thugs were funny. They're not even main characters, they're side characters. I don't know who they were. Most of the attention in this series seems to be on Arthur rather than The Tick, or at least story-wise it is. The Tick has a little bit of uh, backstory in that he hasn't got one, or at least can't remember it. But with Arthur having most of the focus, that's a good thing because The Tick just automatically steals whichever scene he's in. He's big and blue, and his personality is a mile wide. And the tick's back in the shop again, having a conversation with the old woman. And it, it's, it, he's very personable, is the tick. He's not that bright, but he's very personable. He knows everyone by name. And the bad guy has a, <laughs> the bad guy has an Egyptian tomb as a fridge. <laughs> and the tick can't remember who he is. And they incorporate this as part of his backstory for this. And I, I like I like things like director's commentary and whatnot. And on Amazon Video, if you move the mouse around, it causes like little commentary notes to appear. And they said that they did this deliberately so that the tick didn't appear too one-dimensional. And it does make him more rounded. We don't know much about him yet. We have no idea where he's come from. And the tick and Overkill have a fight, obviously, because they have to. And obviously Overkill has no chance against this super strong, super powerful guy. Until he finds the tick's very unusual weakness. This series isn't trying to be particularly clever. It's, it's just trying to be funny. At least that's my take on the situation. I'm fine with that, by the way. Overkill's computer. <laughs> just, just Overkill's computer. And Miss Lint has an ex-husband in her apartment slash lair. She... <laughs> Another comedy pairing in this series. I was not expecting that. And she's trying to get Arthur to work the suit, which of course he can't because it's in a foreign language and he doesn't know what any of it does. And Miss Lint got her name from, uh, from the Terror's henchman because she attracts dust. It's because she has electrical-based superpowers. And she... It generates static, which attracts dust. I, I don't think Cole McGrath ever had this problem. And there's a dog on TV who's wrote a book. It, it sounds funny, but surprisingly, the scene is played very, very seriously. It's kind of difficult to know whether they were going for serious or silly there. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to err slightly on the side of serious. Uh, the dog, by the way, used to be a partner of one of the five. And Arthur is flying. Badly. Or should that be not falling? Tick and Overkill are going to have another fight. And 
Arthur's sister Dot just walks in between them right up to Arthur and starts berating him. It's like, what were you thinking flying up in the sky like that? We're trying to have a fight here. And all the bad guys show up and then the Tick and Overkill are beating them up. Well, the Tick is beating them up. Overkill is slicing them to pieces. And the Terror finally makes an appearance outside of a flashback. And he puts a dinner suit on. And this is another comedy pairing. The Terror and Miss Lynn having this weird conversation. Everyone in this show has has ridiculously over-the-top conversations, but they have them in a very down-to-earth way. It's very weird and very funny. And the bad guys try to knock a bus over the edge of a bridge and the tick is like, curse you, lack of structural rigidity. And he and Arthur get everyone off the bus and they're heroes. Well, we kind of already knew that. And that's pretty much the end of series one. Um, six episodes. And they have different lengths to the episodes. They, they're they not all the same length. Uh, I get the impression that they weren't trying to make them the same length because some of the episodes are like, one of them I think is about 21, 22 minutes. Uh, another one is 27, 28, 29, something like that. As I said before, the series isn't trying to be particularly clever. It's trying to be funny more than anything else. But I understand, and I've never, I've never really interacted with The Tick in any way, shape or form before. I've seen a little bit online, but that's it. But it does seem to me that they're going more for comedy than anything else. They're, they're, they're trying to make a funny series rather than trying to say anything deep or meaningful. I'm, again, I'm fine with that. The Terror has an Amazon Echo, by the way. So that was The Tick, Series 1. Um, better than I was expecting, because I was not expecting so many people to be funny in it. It, it gives you what you expect in that regard, but you just don't expect that many people to be to be contributing towards the humour. Not like that. As I say, a lot of people, a lot of pairings on this screen that they're funny. They're, there's a lot of one person working off of another one and working back. There's a lot of that kind of thing in this series. I hope that this keeps on going. I really do, because I thought this was really fun. It was hysterical in places. The the glass eye thing. <laughs> the glass eye thing had me in, in utter hysterics when that line happened. And that was right at the beginning of episode two. So, yeah, looking forward to more of this. Really hoping it takes off. See you next time.